based on. So from my um, in terms of background, you'll see that this is going to be a committee bill because this is something that um, the language uh, the Attorney General's office requested um, language on um, on this issue, and it was it came in too late um, in terms of me actually introducing the bill. Um, so that's why this is a this is what I requested. And um, uh, David Sher from the Attorney General's office will be here, but I thought Michelle as a drafter could help us understand. The title we're in, um, just some high level what um, you know, basically what, what these laws pertain to and, and generally what you know what the uh, what the bill is attempting to do. Um, I'm really glad to be able to do this um, in light of Tom's <coughs> announcement about his son. Yeah. Um, who, who is my, yeah. Yeah, my son is now uh, a detective with the uh, Seattle Police Department on the Internet Crimes Against Children Division. So, <laughs> right. so more power to him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah, he made his first up. arrest last week. So. Oh, right. Right. So anyway. Yep. Okay. All right, so for the record, Michelle Child's Office of Legislative Council, and as the chair mentioned, um, this would be a committee bill. And I'm just going to give you kind of a broad overview because, again, as uh, Representative Grad mentioned, this is uh, a proposal that is uh, coming from the Attorney General's office, and David is here, and he, so if you have questions about, well, why do we need that, or <coughs> why this thing, whatever, that's all coming from them. I'm just more kind of took what they wanted and put it into the right drafting format and things like that, so I'm going to set you up for the discussion. So what this is doing is it's amending um, Chapter 64 in Title 13. So Title 13, your criminal title. Chapter 64 uh, is entitled Sexual Exploitation of Children. Most of what's in here, there's a, uh, there's a number of crimes, but um, a lot of what's uh, being amended is around uh, when you think about child pornography, sexual performances. Um, so we'll go through and I'll show you the changes. So starting out in section um, 2821 in the definition section, you'll see the first change is on, um, on page two. And, and this is amending the definition of sexual conduct. And you'll see on line 14 the new addition of any simulation of any of the above described con conduct. Um, so it's going to be encompassing anything that's A through F. Um, and any simulation of that. Next change is on so, um, the definition of sexual performance. So you'll see um, it means any performance or any part of a performance which includes sexual conduct. And right now it's by a child, and this adds by, with, or on a child. So I think probably the AG's office can talk to you about why they need that expanded and the types of conduct that might fit under that and why the current definition um, is not adequate for their purposes. Um, hey, top of page three, next change is to the definition of promote. Um, and so this is adding, uh, you'll see on line three, that making um, the material available um, would also fall under promote. Um, and then also on line four, uh, would all, by any means, it talks about under current law, uh, including electronic transmission, and this includes adding file sharing or peer-to-peer -peer networks. So again, something that we see you know, uh, almost every year is some type of legislation that's updating criminal laws to reflect the evolution of technology, right? So I think um, um, oftentimes when you look at a, a lot of the statutes, it may not um, if, you know, with everything changing with cell phones and cameras and all those kinds of things. So that, I'm not looking to go backwards, but uh, uh, why isn't the uh, file sharing and peer-to-peer -peer networks included under electronic transmissions? I, I don't know. That's, okay. I would say, my guess is that the AG's office in, in prosecuting these cases mm -hmm. is coming up into these, term, these terms and maybe feeling as though they're having to argue that it should cover certain things and perhaps is not, and so they want to be explicit and clarify okay. here in the language. Um, so, okay. um, sure. next, okay. I'm sorry. I guess I'm really naive. What does sexual performance mean? Um, the definition is on the bottom of page two. So it's any performance um, which includes sexual conduct by, with, or on a child, and then the definition of sexual conduct is right there in subdivision two. 
So it's any of those things. So if you look at the top of page two, um, from like line one down to line 14. <laughs> so uh, there's a number of places in uh, this chapter where there's just a technical amendment around how we talk about age, and so I won't mention those, but that's just a technical amendment in section 28, 22. Um, there's no changes to 28, 23, but I'm amending the whole chapter, so I just have everything in there. I think it's also because of the, we amend the penalty section. I wanted to have all parts of the chapter there so you could look and see how the penalties all fit together. Um, page four, top of page four, it's section 28, 24, and this is promoting a recording of sexual conduct. And again, um, this is adding the, where it talks about sexual conduct by, under current law, by a child. This is added <coughs> with or on a child as well. So we see that earlier on the definition of sexual performance. Um, next changes are on page five in section 2825. And so this is the penalty section. This is a, an old chapter and, I, uh, and so it's, it's a little, it's a little unusual in the way that it is. It has all the different crimes in different sections, and then it has one penalty section that then refers back to all those particular sections, rather than oftentimes when you're looking in a section, it'll say, you know, here's the crime, here's the elements, and here's the punishment if you do it. So, um, but we're looking at 2825. And uh, I've reworked subsection C. There's a new misdemeanor crime added in there. There's one crime, there's a, a, an, a, an area of crimes that's increased from a two year misdemeanor to a three year felony. And then the five years. Where's that now? This is in subsection C. I'll take you through it, okay. Uh, okay. subdivision by subdivision. But I had to kind of rework it all to add the new stuff in. Mm -hmm. So you see in subsection C for. Um, for the penalties, and this is referring to 2827, which again, it's the way that this, the chapter is kind of structured is weird because the penalties are before 2827. But if you look on page seven, you can see when we're talking about 2827, we're talking about um, what's currently labeled as possession of child pornography, and the proposal is to change it to possession of child sexual abuse materials. So when we're talking about subsection C, we're going to talk about that particular section, and here's the penalties. So under subdivision C1, it creates a new misdemeanor uh, for a year maximum if the violation of 2827 involved a visual portrayal of a child who is nude or partially clothed, and the visual portrayal is, and it has to have all of these, it has to be unrelated to the sale of a commercially available legal product, has to be uh, used for purely prurient purposes and have no serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're starting to see more and more, like you had mentioned with the change in electronics, mm -hmm. um, people using tools uh, to voyeur. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, either yep. publicly or at you know, um, at their own their own home. So the the act of that would fall into that category. Um, or, or, it, it might. I would say if you're talking <laughs> about like voyeurism and sur and, and secretly uh, filming Film, someone. Yeah. We have a specific voyeurism law that's in another chapter. Exactly. So if you remember when I was talking mm -hmm. about the prostitution bill, mm -hmm. is there's two sub-chapters in that chapter, which is it's lewdness and prostitution. The lewdness mm -hmm. sub-chapter has a specific crime of voyeurism, and that's where either people are kind of the peeping Tom right. stuff or using some type of device to record mm -hmm. someone. Um, who is partially clothed or engaged in a sexual act, and so that's a separate crime. Um, but and being a child. But being a child, yeah. yes, and so uh, possessing those images, so it could be that somebody might be able, depending on the circumstances, they could be charged under voyeurism, but then they could also, also be charged be under having <coughs> and being in possession <coughs> of, of this material. Yep. Um, so that's a one-year misdemeanor. Subdivision, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, okay, so Number one on line 12 down through A, B, and C is mm -hmm. a new crime. Yes. And 
Well, it, it's, yeah, it's kind of, a, I would say kind of a new crime because if somebody is doing these things now, I'm going to assume there's a penalty for it. Well, I think and that would be for, uh, I think for David to answer my, okay. my again I'm assuming that these things are coming and being proposed by the Attorney General's <clears throat> offices because they're not either clearly uh, um, prosecutable under an existing provision of law or they want another tool there but I right. think that's going to be more of a question for 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 David okay. um, so subdivision C2 um, and this is a, a three-year felony um, for uh, possessing uh, a clearly lewd exhibition of a child's genital or anus or, or other, other than a depiction of sexual conduct by a child. And that is currently, you'll see at the top of page six where the, line, where the, where the language is struck, that's currently a two-year misdemeanor. And so this particular crime, again, is on the books, but it's a two-year misdemeanor and subdivision C2 is increasing it to a three-year felony. And then lastly, page six, subdivision C3, and this is, um, looks like it's a lot of change, but it's really not changing anything. I just had to do it in the context of subsection C, which is um, that if you're violating 2827 and it involves possessing material that involves sexual conduct by a child, again, going back to your definition of sexual conduct that's in, in subdivision uh, two on page two, um, then that is a five-year felony, and that penalty is not changing. Um, next changes are on subsection E, and, uh, and so this is for a violation of 2828, uh, which is luring a child. So if you just want to look at the existing language and um, what conduct that includes, you would look on page nine for luring a child. And uh, so the current penalty for luring a child is a five-year felony, um, and, but there's two new uh, carve-outs for that that have increased penalties. So you'll see in subdivision E2, if a person is uh, convicted of luring under 2828, um, but the violation involved the person physically traveling to meet a child who is under 16 years of age or um, another person who they believe to be a child under 16 years of age. So if it's a law enforcement officer doing something, um, uh, kind of a sting operation, and the person is, thinks that they're meeting a child, um, then that would be a 10-year felony, not a five-year felony. And then subdivision E3 is that if someone has a subsequent so if they already have one conviction for luring um, uh, and then they get a second or a subsequent, then that would be a tenure felony. Um, page seven, so going to the possession of child pornography uh, section. Um, so you'll see on line 16, so right now it talks about no person shall with knowledge of the character and content possess. And then this is adding or knowingly access with the intent to view. Again, you know, I think what David can talk about is what they're seeing in terms of using electronics and using the internet and whether or not people feel as though I could see that the word possess would be a little ambiguous when you're talking about people accessing something on the internet. Um, You'll see on line 18 this, uh, this language that we've already seen in a couple different places when you're talking about sexual conduct by, with, or on a child. Um, line 19, um, bringing in the provision we talked about before, which is uh, visual portrayal of a child who is nude or partially clothed, if the visual portrayal is, and then talks about um, the, uh, that it's not related to commercially available product. It's used purely for prurient purposes and has no serious literary, artistic, or scientific value. And then I think that's it in terms of substantive changes. I think the rest are just technical, and then it has an effective date of this July. Yeah, I just look. With the, uh, the 
this kind of jog something with visual portrayal of a child who is nude or partially clothed. What if, take Facebook, what if somebody posted a picture of their, say their three-year-old son from the back and that was, that was nude just because they thought it was cute to show a butt picture of, of their son? Right. I mean, I would certainly, I would argue that, that that's not being used for purely prurient interests. Right. Right? Okay. And that that's the purpose of that is now is to be like, look how, look how cute my kid is, rather, right. you know, to my, to my family, rather than trying to arouse sexual interest in someone. Right. Certainly something I would promote because it would be used, but, <laughs> but I, right. yeah. Yeah, no, these are this, this, these are very, very tricky issues, and when, when this committee has grappled with the voyeurism law, with the revenge porn law, with all of these things, is trying to look at and say, well, what, what images constitute, um, you know, something, what, what crosses the line is, right. is, 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 right. is, it takes a lot of discussion, and to be able to um, accurately um, identify it for purposes of the statute and make sure that you're not sweeping in things that you don't intend to, whether it be um, artistic or scientific or literary or somebody just sharing pictures of their kids with the most innocent purposes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it, it seems a little ambiguous and unclear. I'm looking at that use for purely mm -hmm. purposes. Uh, that something could be put out innocently and then somebody actually uses it for that purpose. Right. See, why, why, I would suggest, and this is way too early in this, but I'll ask David, why wouldn't we do something like intended for use for purely purely purposes? So there's an intent element to that of the person actually sending it out. Yeah, I, I did not choose that language, so I, uh, you would have to ask as to why. Um, I think we're going to hear about yeah. how these cases are mm -hmm. successfully or not successfully being prosecuted and, and the challenges that To me, I mean, that, yeah. that, what Martin was saying sounds a little clearer. Yeah. That's... Yes. <laughs> I mean, it could be as to having to, whether or not you have to be proving the intent of the person. Did they intend to just share it, you know, and then you say, they say, well, I intended, you know, to share it, like, uh, very innocently, you know, and they say, well, how do you prove that they intended it for, for purient purposes? Sorry. Okay. I guess we just have to make clear who's what using. Well, let's hear from David and others, yeah. Great. Thank you. Good morning, David Chair with the Attorney General's Office. Thanks for having me this morning. This uh, proposal is coming from our criminal division, and to give <coughs> the committee a little bit of background, our criminal division has dedicated investigators pursuant to some federal funding uh, called the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, and uh, federal government funds, I believe, um, the sort of equipment and technical uh, uh, parts of that, what they need to provide, and then the state of Vermont funds the investigators, uh, and there's also some investigators in the Department of Public Safety who work on this also. So our office ends up doing a large number of these prosecutions, and that's why it is us who are coming to you today with this proposal. Um, I will, oh, and I should also say, we posted, I believe Mike was successfully able to post some, a series of articles from the New York Times last fall that um, do a very good job of describing the scope of the problem. Certainly our investigators are, and our prosecutors are somewhat overwhelmed with the volume of uh, cases and issues that they spot. So um, this is partially in response to what the New York Times did a very good job of describing in terms of the scope of the problem. So, so where are the leads coming from? Where are leads coming from? Yeah. Uh, oh, so I should also say, uh, it's, as a partial answer to that question, we wanted to have investigator Matt Raymond come in and talk to you today so that he could talk about exactly oh, okay. those types of technical questions and also, frankly, talk about some of the 
practical obstacles they see, which this bill attempts to answer. Will he become an eventually? Assuming the committee is okay with having him, yes, Mm -hmm. he will be available. He's at a conference right now, so he just isn't in the state. But Mm -hmm. next time this gets taken up, we'd love to have him talk to you and answer some of those questions. Um, And he can tell you more about the process of investigation, which um, produces those leads. So going through the bill, um, I will go to page two here and talk a little bit about some of the policy concerns and some of the stuff that we're talking about here is pretty uncomfortable, just to give people a heads up, which I'm sure you realize. Um, <coughs> the simulation of any of the above described conduct, and uh, which is the line 14 amendment, the amendment on line 14, and the um, amendment on line 20, which includes the with or on a child, these were both amendments aimed at getting around le- um, loopholes, if you will, that, that attorneys are using and defendants are using uh, when prosecutions are being brought in instances where um, there's clearly sexual conduct occurring, but um, the sexual conduct may not have been caught with somebody touching somebody else. So, for example, uh, a video depicting somebody masturbating onto a child, um, that's actually not um, that because there hasn't been the physical touching that's described in this performance definition, um, the hope is that with, by including the, both of those amendments, that type of behavior will be more clearly captured uh, by the definition. Uh, another example that they have given where they've had, and these are all coming from specific cases where they've had difficulty with prosecutions, even though, again, there's clearly some bad behaviors happening. Um, they've seen videos and images. There, there's been videos and images found where there's an erect penis that's very close to, say, the mouth or genitals of a child. And, again, without that intentional touching piece of it, um, the definition currently doesn't include that. And the hope and the the belief is that by including in the definition the simulation uh, part of it and the uh, with or on a child part of it will both uh, encapsulate that behavior more effectively. Again, this is stuff that a common sense observer would say clearly this is child sexual abuse material, um, but there's some technical legal loopholes that have been exploited by people uh, in these cases. Uh, Moving on to the next page, page three. This is really about updating it to take account for modern technology. Uh, And Representative Burdett, you had a specific question about that, which was well taken, and it's, you know, what are we doing here? Why wouldn't this be, why wouldn't the peer-to-peer file and file sharing networks already be covered? And again, when you look at it carefully, Peer-to-peer, file share, peer-to-peer networks and file sharing means that somebody isn't necessarily in possession or has arguably not procured any of the images or videos. They are just watching a stream of them that and that a streaming of that, but the information, if you will, is being stored somewhere else, on some other computer, some server somewhere else, um, and they're accessing it uh, in a manner such that it's not in the device that they are in possession of. So right now, um, arguably, streaming isn't covered by this, and that's been an argument that's been successfully made in cases where we're trying to have. So so something that's stored somewhere else, but so this is covering somebody who might be watching it, but it's not um, loaded in their computer. Right. So, like the Dropbox or something like that. Um, it would be like I don't because I know not that I have a lot of information. Just talking with my son that some people will store their uh, their stuff in in Dropbox. Is that the reason that maybe some laws don't don't cover it as well as we intend to? As long as what's happening is the remote accessing of it, and I'm actually not sure about Dropbox in particular. The the examples that come to mind are actually old examples from back in the days when uh, streaming music was very popular. Um, (laughs) Spotify's kind of killed off the illegal aspect of that industry, but like LimeWire and um, 
uh, Napster. Napster, thank you, were the prime examples of that. And those were peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks where the music you were listening to was not on your computer, it was somewhere else, um, but you were able to access it. And that the same types of technology are being used for the dissemination of child pornography and, I should say, child sexual abuse material. And the other aspect of this is that when you are accessing those, the way this technology works is when you're accessing those videos and watching them, you are, by doing so, making them available to other people. The way the peer-to-peer -peer networks operate, as I understand it, and I'm not an expert myself on this, is that the act of watching it, uh, makes it available for other people to, it, it opens up the network and makes it more available for other people to access as well. So you are both accessing it um, and you're disseminating it in the act of doing so. So the usage of these peer-to-peer -peer networks really expands, very rapidly expands the ability for people to access the material. So that's why that's being added. And again, these are coming from specific prosecutions that have run into trouble because of the definitions not covering things that a common sense observer would say clearly that was intended to be covered by the statutes. Um, on page four, the way they're on, is like, that's the only change. And again, that's repeating the, uh, the change made on the prior page. One other nuance I will put in here. My understanding is that in addition to what I already mentioned, the with or on clarifies that the child um, doesn't need to have agency in this. When you say conduct by a child, it makes it appear as though the child has some agency here. And the point is, however you want to look at it, they don't. And uh, just clarifying that the that an element of the crime is not trying to prove that the child had some sort of agency and yeah. participating. Make sure folks understand where agency is. Where you're going no. Okay. Couldn't somebody in this day and age, because I'm not tech savvy, but can't they go and set up their own stuff by taking different parts of something and going and actually making something that didn't happen happen? and go and use that uh, if they want to get somebody? You mean like creating a false document and then planting it or something like that? Or, or a video or, or something. You know, you go and you see these, I don't even know what they call them, but, but where they're doctored up and, you know, for like a funny thing, what do they call them, those mimis or whatever they are and all that stuff? <laughs> I mean, can't they do that same thing on, on stuff like this? I'm sure they could. I'm sure they do. I think part of the underlying policy goal here is to make a market for this as difficult as possible. I understand to that, and I'm all for that. And, I got it. and one of the fixes that we have here is the simulation piece that we talked about on the prior page. Or, um, H2. Two, H2, sorry, thank you. Um, on line 14. And part of the point of that, any simulation of the above described conduct is to capture those types of videos where a defense may be raised that this didn't actually happen in real life, but we took an image of a child and an image of an erect penis, which is an example that I used already, um, and put them together. Um, and that still is, frankly, satisfying the interests of people who want to get at this material. And the point is to really make that something that's difficult, make that market a difficult one to access and maintain. Okay. Yeah. What happens if somebody was to go and look at something and they didn't even know what they were looking at and then all of a sudden they go on to something that is just as disgusting as this is and they didn't mean to even go there or they had no idea what they were Intent is always a defense in criminal law. If it genuinely was an accident and it's not something you repeated, that's a defense you could bring up if you end up getting caught up in some sort of, or a person got caught up in some sort of investigation and there was a genuine, genuinely no intent to access that material, I think that would be a defense, but that would be a factual case-by-case -case inquiry. Okay. So in terms of agency, do folks understand that you're looking at the 
agency that um, David was talking about that there's no agency. Folks get that? Go ahead. Where, where are you at now? Um, well, for example, um, line three, the reason why it had just said sexual conduct by a child, and so the words with or an and. So they wanting just. Yeah, so the concept oh. we're getting at there is making sure it's very clear to judges and juries and so forth that the child doesn't have to have. Um, uh, been intending to engage in this or have meant to engage in this or was trying to engage in this. When you use the word by, uh, it makes it seem, it arguably makes it seem as though uh, you have to find that the child had some sort of purpose in doing this. And this is to make it clear that that is not something that was is intended or needs to be found. It's just the fact of the child being there and being abused in this way is sufficient. So moving to page five. David, before you, yeah. and this is, pertains to nothing you're talking about at this point, what, what was the investigator's name that? Matthew Raymond. Matthew Raymond, okay, We'll you. have him in here <laughs> next time we take it up. He'll be back, he's back in the state starting Monday. Um, I, I actually think it might be a little easier if we hold the penalties section because of the strange design of this statute. Uh, hold the penalty section for a minute. I thought about rewriting all of it, and I thought it was going to make your job a lot harder. <laughs> no. <why> I didn't. <laughs> um, that's fine. Let's jump ahead to page seven, if you don't mind, and then we'll come back to the penalties, just because normally that's how we would talk about these things. So <clears throat> on page seven, line 16, this is, again, another fix aimed at the live streaming peer-to-peer -peer network type of issue where when we're talking about possession, um, somebody who's live streaming it, certainly we would view as just as culpable as somebody who is has it in their possession. And this is just making clear that live streaming is also illegal. I think this goes to Ken's question as well yeah. earlier, where it talks about knowingly access. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so yeah. that's, that's where you, there has to be intent to actually access the material, knowing that that's the kind of material. Line 16. Yeah, thank you. That's a good good point. On that goes right to that issue. The yeah. next, oh, thank you. Good to go. Uh, the next chunk I want to talk about is this additional category of behavior that is basically being proposed uh, as a new crime that's being criminalized. Um, this is getting at what is sometimes termed child erotica, and will sometimes be <clears throat> images oftentimes, or I should say the cases that are concerning to investigators are instances where somebody has possession of a very large number of photographs of uh, children who may be nude or partially clothed or are clothed in very sexually provocative positions. Um, and currently that behavior is not unlawful under the statutes because um, the child sexual abuse material is uh, narrowed to the sexual <coughs> conduct, um, is, is defined by the sexual conduct parts of it that are in statute that we went over earlier on pages, uh, mostly on page two. Um, so this gets at that behavior. Uh, our prosecutors and investigators would acknowledge that this is going to be an unusual charge. It's not likely to be able to be brought because the carve-outs are broad, and that's appropriate. Um, the point here is not to criminalize things like the picture of the child in the bath that's an innocent family photo, which is a good example that you brought up. Um, well, and one thing that was going through my mind is just thinking back to the uh, John Benet Ramsey case. I mean. Yeah what was she, eight years old or something, but just all made up yeah. and uh, not in any provocative clothes, but even kids that age, they sometimes when they have their pictures taken, if, if it was in a, a, you know, an adult woman posing in the same way it would be considered sexual. So. Right, and again, the, um, I think the caveat with, on line one of page eight, used for 
purely prurient purposes right. yeah. uh, is intended to really keep out those types of behaviors. I will also say, in the interest of full transparency, our uh, lawyers have been looking at this section again over the last day or two, and we are considering proposing some changes to this piece of it, because we do understand some of the concerns that have already been raised uh, with respect to uh, potentially being overbroad. We, this comes from, this is actually taken almost directly from a current um, West Virginia statute that is good law. Um, there's a Texas statute that's quite similar that is good law. So we believe that there's, um, this is sort of constitutionally permissible. We also want to make sure that we are really within the confines of what's constitutionally permissible uh, in terms of what you can regulate and make unlawful. So. We, uh, I would say, are likely to come back as soon as possible <laughs> with some proposed amendments to this piece just to make sure we're not uh, stepping onto shaky ground because we, it's certainly not our intention to propose something that um, might be unconstitutional. So we'll probably come back and narrow this a little bit, uh, redefine it slightly. Um, just want to let the committee know that, that we are cognizant of that issue. So. Having said that, let's actually jump back to page five and the penalties. <clears throat> um, we can jump down to line nine here. And again, this is the same change we already went over uh, on page seven, where we're trying to cover live streaming and peer-to-peer -peer networks. Um, and then the structure of, if we move further down, this is, as Michelle noted, just the way that this statute is written. We had to import the entire definition of this um, new offense into the penalty section to make it work. That being said, this, if the other thing changes, this will change too. So if this is redrafted to make it narrower and more clearly defined for, um, to, to make it, make certain that we are within the constitutional boundaries, uh, this will also change. Uh, and then, as Michelle noted, the penalty structure mm -hmm. changes slightly such that um, this becomes a, yeah, hold on one second, that we, this becomes a three-year felony, and the on subsection three on the next page, there's a five-year felony. That actually isn't a change. That's the same penalty that existed previously. But there would be a bump up from a two- to three-year um, for the possession sections. So on line 18, imprisoned not more than three years or fined not more than 5,000. Oh, or both. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> I not read it all the way through. Yes. So can you say why? Um, it would move up from two to three? I think the concept was that if they're going to include this um, new crime for a different set of behavior, it made sense to have this be the lowest what penalty level and then move the more arguably more um, severe violations up one level. That was the violation. I, I will say, you know, again, perfectly transparent, if the committee has different ideas about how they want to structure that, I don't think our office is particularly concerned about the precise years here. The main, the main goal of this bill is to make sure that the harmful behavior that's happening is captured by our statutes. So I'd say that if you want to have a discussion about that, we're fine with having a discussion about that. The, the real thrust of this bill is the stuff that happened, the stuff that we're proposing with respect to file sharing and um, simulations and so forth. So I take it. So when I first looked at this bill, I mean, it's just like, wow, right? So it's really mind-boggling. But I take it most of you in this room have dealt with this um, bill before or, or this content before, correct? Uh, I'd be mixed. Yeah, tenure, I mean, you know, tenure on the committee. I don't um, think we've done it in, in a while, six years, right? Six, so mm -hmm. It's been this way for a long time. It was one aspect we did. Well, David had one. Uh, we didn't answer to her. Now we didn't touch on. 
little bit of this, of the tiny piece of this in human services when we were there? I don't remember that. Yeah, Michelle. I don't think. It, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, I think my recollection was uh, the last time that really much of this chapter was really kind of tinkered with was kind of when Eric was new, which was. I think 1999, according to. I was going to say, the 1999 okay. uh, was his first. And not the sense yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it was. I don't think I remember that was he and I grappling with it. Okay. Well, when he like that, this involved a conversation someplace along the way. 99 would have been the start of file sharing, so. Yeah. Just for, for music and stuff, so. What, it wouldn't have been a technology that right. we would have been thinking about. Yeah. But that was like in the Napster years. I don't even know what Napster is. That's how out of date I am on this stuff. You missed that completely. Yeah, <laughs> and it sounds like it, I'm glad I did. <laughs> well, Napster was fun. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. Anyway, please. Okay. So I'm happy to answer any questions. That was the presentation, and um, as I said, we'll come. We will come back on that one piece in particular. <laughs> I don't have any questions about it, but I do have a just a timing thing here. Um, you know, I, I see why the bill's being brought forward, but I'm I'm a little bit you know unnerved at the at the coming forward as a as a potential committee bill. Um, if this isn't a was, was were these issues that came up within the past couple of months since we've been in session. I, I can't speak to the sort of introduction of the bill piece um, in, in terms of the committee bill piece. I'm mm -hmm. not as familiar with how that happened in this situation. I mean, I can I tell you... it was not brought to the attention of the committee until after the bill drafting deadline. That could well be. And I actually wasn't the person who in my office, so I can check and get you an answer on that. I, I, I will. I'd hope that your office in the future would seek to, especially um, given the fact that we have about 60 bills on the wall that representatives were hoping would have a hearing that they could um, take some time to make sure that all the issues they need addressed have the time to get introduced in the proper manner. I will certainly remind folks that Thank that you. is how we need to do things. Speaking of bills on the wall, um, would you consider or think about uh, whether um, the result of the task force that looked into grooming, which suggested a change to 2828, which I noticed is in this bill, uh, whether that might be included in here. It's, it's currently in H659, right. uh, which is exactly the language that that task force recommended. And I think you were on that task force. I was on the task force, yeah. So I wonder whether that fits into what we're doing here. And I, I'd ask the chair of that as well. But, but since I noticed that that section, that that task force suggested amending as part of this bill. Sure, and I will check with our criminal division and see how they feel about pulling that in and get you a clearer answer on that next time we okay. pick it up. <coughs> Six, eight, eight. Six, five, nine. And, and Matt's not going to like it because my name's on it, but <laughs> the point is that it is exactly the language that this particular right. task force wanted, and nobody else apparently wanted to try to get it into a bill. Well, it's basically the same as 618 at the top, too, right? Uh, it's not. Our, no? <coughs> That's what I love about you lawyers. Of grooming and minor. <laughs> How am I getting blamed for that? <laughs> Prohibiting grooming a child. Yeah. Is the, the 619, I mean 618 has to do in the context of human trafficking? Um, right. Right. So solely within no, human trafficking and what constitutes, um, uh, I can't remember what we're defining, but adding grooming into the definitions <laughs> for human trafficking. Right. And <laughs> this is on. Uh, and I'm in chapter 64, so in another area of law. So. Thank you.